Goeiedag allemaal. Vandaag is mijn gast hier in die vierde episode van die Talent Tough Tools reeks, die baie bekende bergfietsrijer Candice Lal. Nou Candice praat met ons uit Oostenrijk uit, Alipad, en um, ons gaan nou hoor wat maak sy daar, maar sy is ook onlangs aangewees en gekies vir die Suid-Afrikaanse bergfietsspan vir die Olympische Spele wat in juli in Tokio gaan plaas gaan. Hallo Candice en welkom hier by ons. Thank you, thanks for having me. So, sê vir my, wat maak jy in Oostenrijk? So, I'm here in Leogang in Austria. Um, it's a big mountain bike area, there's so many trails here, it's like a paradise for us mountain bikers and um, but they have the world cup mountain bike um yeah just one of the rounds of the world cup mountain bike series here this weekend so i will be racing the short track on friday which qualifies you for the start line on sunday to see if you can get into those first three rows and then sunday is the cross country race so sê gaan vir my gaan suid afrikaners kan inskakel en gaan ons kan kyk na die die lewendige uitsending sondag. Yes. Yeah. So it's they always show it on Red Bull TV. So if you go you can access it from any kind of browser, Google or whatever you type in Red Bull TV and then go to live and they'll have a Leo Gang World Cup there this weekend. They also have the downhill on Saturday. So it's a full it'll be Friday, Saturday and Sunday that you can watch. Gaan jy, gaan jy saterdag ook deelneem, of nie? No, no, so I'm not that crazy. <laughs> Those downhillers are really mad in the head. <laughs> well, baie, baie voorspit en start, en asjeblief kom dier um, na sondag toe, want ons wil allemaal vir jou kyk en jou allemaal ondersteun. Thank you, thank you. So Candice, um, ek denk kom ons rewind net so'n bykie, en begin net by die heel begin, waar alles vir jou begin het, vertel ons net so'n bykie meer van jou, van jou groot word jare, ek weet jy het groot geword in Pazuli Natal, yeah. maar hoe hoe het bergfiets begin vir jou? So for me, cycling and being on a bike has kind of been part of my life since I was a toddler. Um, it sounds really crazy to say, so well let me just start, I grew up on a farm in KZN, my dad's a farmer, um, he farmed sugarcane and macadamia, so there was no lack of space, there was a lot of freedom, um, and yeah, like an awesome way to grow up, of course. Um, and naturally coming from a farm, kids are on bikes all the time. And yeah, I just took to it then already. Um, and one of the things I always say, or like a, a funny story I always tell is my dad, um, when I was really young, like two or three, he got me on one of those little yellow BMX bikes and he put a broomstick like in between um, on the rear stay that stuck out so if I struggled like he could just push me along with the broomstick because he actually had a bad back and he didn't want to bend over and help me that's actually um, so clever yeah yeah so this broomstick was kind of what helped me along and and made me be able to challenge myself like a bit further without worrying that you know I can't get home um, but when I was three um, my dad tells a story that I rode 22 kilometers no way. Already. Yes. No way. <laughs> yes. So from there, it was kind of just part of my life always. Um, and yeah, carried on living on the farm throughout primary school. Did a lot of other sports in primary and high school. Um, but always cycled in the background and did some mountain bike races and just enjoyed it, you know. And, and I think it's important to develop those skills and your kind of level of competence on a bike before you actually go serious with racing. So I think that was a really good thing for me. I will now go terug, terug hoop na die Olympische Spele toe, maar vertel net vir ons, ek meen, dit is, ek dink is enige fietsrijer en enige professionele fietsrijer sy droom om aan die Olympische Spele deel te neem. Hoe het jy gevoel toe jy gehoor het, jy gaan jullie um, taakje uit toe? <laughs> So it's been quite a quite a wild journey up to this point because the selection policy runs over a number of years um, and then obviously with 2020 being how crazy it was with everything and no sport going on that kind of threw a spanner in the works um, so it, it became quite a quite a last minute thing to be selected um, and yeah it was up until uh, probably two weeks ago or yeah probably yeah so I only have like six weeks or less to go to the Olympics and now I've been chosen. But 
yeah, I think it was always a very close run between myself and another woman called Mariska Strauss. Yeah. Um, and Cherie Riedeker was also in the running until she broke her collarbone a few months ago. But yeah, I think to be the one that's that's chosen is it is it's a huge honor and it it shows that well, I was consistent. This pretty deal. This pretty yeah. deal. Yeah. Sure. So it's really exciting. <laughs> So, so, how can it work? When you go and, um, yeah, as you pull up, can it fill up from here? Okay, so the the race is on 27th of July in Tokyo, um, and we just got the confirmation today that we're going to go 10 days before. So, 17th of July, I will leave. Um, my plan is, I've been in Europe for a while now, doing some racing and getting used to the intensity. Um, but I'm going to go home after this race this weekend to do a few weeks just to build, you know, reset, get everything in line, um, brush up on some things that I know I need for the race. Um, just and then but, just but. Yeah. Oh, so, so let's say, I mean, specifically what the course is going to be like. So I know there's quite a big drop off that I'm going to have to do. Um, and I know kind of how big it is. So I need to practice that oh. high. <laughs> <laughs> Scares me as well, don't worry. Um, I know that the climbs are short and steep, so I'm going to be doing shorter, explosive efforts, you know, 30 second sprints, one minute sprints, um, just getting used to that, like, really hard effort. Um, and, yeah, then just also being able to ride really big rocks. Um, from what I've seen, there's a lot of rocks on the course. Oh. And, yeah, just to get in the right mind space so that when I get there, it's not all so overwhelming. Um, so it's actually cross country mountain bike is a yeah. it's not an endurance event as we have in South Africa, you know, yeah. with the stage races and the long races. It's the whole race is 90 minutes, so an hour and a half. Um, and you race on a circuit that's for normally like 45 Ks long, but it's very technical. It's got ups and downs and like all the jumps and the rocks and crazy things. But it's basically like you sprint out the out the start and you just keep that like you have to try and just keep the highest pace you can for the whole 90 minutes so it's very intense sure okay and you you grootse doelwit um wil jy terugkom met 'n medaille en wat wat is jou plan look so the level is extremely high of course oh, um oh. in south africa it's nice for me a lot of the time you know you can rely on either winning or getting a podium. Um, but then when you come here, you realize, or oh, I've been in Europe now, you realize that there's a lot of, every single person here is as good as you or better. Oh. And you need to find a way to to get, get ahead of them or, or fight for it more or whatever it is. Um, so my goal for the Olympics, I would say realistically a top 15 would be a very good finish for me um, this year. And yeah, that's what I'll work towards. Is jy bang? Wat, of, of kom ek vraag, wat is jy ergste? Is jy, is jy bang of opgewonde? Wat die in weeg die zwaarste? No, definitely, definitely more excited than scared. But I think that um, the nature of this sport is that there are things that are very, sometimes when you look at them, they are very scary and intimidating. And it's even so, something like the start. It's very, um, if you... Can get overwhelmed you can get overwhelmed easily when everyone's sprinting and fighting for position and i think it's just to find a way that you can remain calm in the chaos um and that's got a lot to do with your mental you know, mental preparation that you've done and say for my mom who bereaves yourself mentally for 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 so it's and that is massive it is it really is and yeah it's something that that I'm always still working on and, and always still exploring because, you know, people say that sport is, yes, it's physical, but it's also hugely, hugely mental. And I don't think people realize how big, how big the mental component is. Um, so already now I'm visualizing, I'm looking at the obstacles, I'm setting time aside in the day to think about, okay, I'm picturing myself going down here and just launching off that big drop that I'm scared of, you know. So it's, it starts now already to prepare and visualize mentally um, what your strategy is going to be 
in the race or even in uh, practice. My age, iemand wat jou help dan meer, wat jou mentally, wat wat jou help om het recht te doen. Me. I haven't worked with somebody like a psychologist or a mental no. coach, but it's definitely oh, yeah. something that <laughs> I'm possibly thinking of doing now when I go oh. home, um, just in the weeks leading up to Tokyo, because it's something that you can definitely gain huge amount from. Um, and it's not, it's not about, you know, comparing yourself to others or like just getting overwhelmed by what other people are doing. I think it's, oh. it's about what you can do to make yourself successful um, in the best way possible and when you start achieving those little things even yeah within a mental capacity it's it's motivating and it gives you confidence um, and that's what you need creative equipment het al in 1979 begin handel drijf en doen tot vandaag die invoeren en verspreiding van een weierreeks krachtproducten en brandstof aangedreven tuingereedschap Met hulle Talent Tools reeks gaan alles oor die voorraad en die vervaardiging van die sterkste gereedskap vir die moeilikste take. Ons doel is om een weie reeks uitzonderlijke producte tegen bekostigbare prijzen te verskaf, recht oor Suider-Afrika, en die beste te bied in unieke rugsteuningsdienst en algehele toewijding aan ons kliënte. Kijk uit vir die talon naamwoorde. Talent weet dat jy en jou werk net die beste verwacht, en daarom word hulle reeks producte nou keerig gekies vir kwaliteit en werksverrichting. Hulle het voorraadkundiges in alle groot centrums vir jou gemak en die online winkel sal verseker dat jy die rechte hulpmiddel vir jou werk vind. Creative Equipment, pijkproducte, professionele diens en langtermijn verhoudings vir onderdele en naverkope diens. Jy luister na Theresa Koetsee op Niespot. Pot, 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 pot. En dus ek weet, jy bly in Stellenbosch hier in Zuid-Afrika. Actually in Cape Town. Oh, oké. Okay. Yeah. Ja. In Noortuk. Oh, oh oké. Okay. <laughs> so, hoe lyk een gewone dag in jou leven? Oefen jy van die ochend tot die avond? Of het jy die job? Wat? Hoe lyk kan dit lulse leven? Oké, okay. so speaking about all the, the mental side as well, I am doing an honours degree in psychology at the moment. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> so you think I'm going to come to help me? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's still a good idea, but um, yeah, so that I'm doing kind of on the side and, and I have, I did my undergrad over a number of years um, and now I decided to, to do the honours and one of my subjects at the moment is actually sports psychology. Um, so I'm learning a lot through that as well. So Basically, for me, a day is a balance between training um, and all the stuff around that, of course, you know, preparing your meals, um, all the recovery things as well, um, massage, stretching, any kind of gym or core exercises as well, and then having a bit of time as well to to do like an hour or two of studying in the day. I don't always get it right. Um, Of course, there's other things in life, like, you know, you we have sponsor commitments, um, a lot of uh, preparate, like admin kind of stuff in order to get to all the races and plan things out correctly. Um, and then just your normal stuff, like going shopping and cooking and stuff like that. So yeah, a day doesn't always look the same for me, um, but I try to balance all these things and still be a happy person at the end of the day. And what did you do as you need to study in Fitzraini? What's your other hobbies? What do you I think for me, I don't have other huge hobbies, but I like doing things that force me to just relax and kind of forget about any expectation or um, goal that I've set for myself. So to take my dog for a walk on the beach is really cool. Um, and you're just there and you're enjoying nature and there's no like expectation coming out of it. Um, I like to try things also that like, let's say, I'm learning a little bit to surf and things like that. So it just where it's not like I have to win the, the competition now, it's just oh, to it's enjoy so something for what it is. Um, yeah. So just, and, and there's a lot of that to do around Cape Town, you know, fun things like going to markets and just, yeah, just enjoying the lifestyle. Is it pedantic or what you eat? Is, is it belangrijk for you? So I wouldn't say I'm pedantic, but I am. <laughs> <laughs> but I am 
I am definitely aware. So of course, um, with racing and stuff, it is important to fuel yourself correctly, to know, um, you know, you don't want to be having too few carbohydrates the day before or during a big session. Um, but also at the same time, you don't want to be, I think the, ma the main goal of any cross country racer is to have the most power with the le least weight possible, but you don't want that to come at a cost um, or at any kind of danger of developing some kind of obsession over eating. So I think to find a balance, to get all your good healthy foods and, but also have a bit of time for a meal that's not necessarily perfect, you know? No. Yeah. In een na die, die spelen gaan dit obviously gaan jy, gaan jy bykie meer kan ontspan. En... Yes, exactly. So that's how you find the balance. I think for me, I know I can commit towards a really big goal um, and do like a really good eating program, but still within, within balance. But then I know that after that race, I can let yeah. go and enjoy it for a bit, you know. So it's, it's kind of like finding that, those waves um, and riding it a bit. In the race van 2021, what what lay for you? It's so funny. Like I haven't really thought past the Olympics right now. <laughs> I'm just like my whole mindset and everything is just geared towards um, that race at the Olympics. But I'm looking forward to to doing some of the races back in South Africa. Um, yes, water. Uh, there will be like wines to Wales. Um, I'm not sure in the Bergen bushes. I think I might miss that one. But I just love that sense of community in the mountain bike world in South Africa and doing those fun stage races, which are less stress for me. Um, of course, there is the Cape Epic in October, which I'm supposed to be doing. Um, oh. Again, haven't thought of that right now, but I think I will end up doing it with uh, Mariska, another South African woman. Oh, and, and that, that, yeah, that is really, really exciting. I hope yeah. it goes ahead. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and then, yes, there's still the World Championships later this year in Italy, um, and that also comes after the Olympics, um, but it's just to find how I'm going to make all this work. Say <laughs> yeah. for me, is, is you bang for COVID, and is that a factor on the moment? Because I mean, that can the whole game for an hour as you know. Yeah. yeah. So I have done a lot of traveling now over the past few months and obviously the rules are always back and forth and then there's a wave and then yeah. things are changing. Um, it seems like at the moment here in Europe, uh, so we were able to leave South Africa as long as we had a negative COVID test um, and a few other documents and stuff. And here in Europe, we've done multiple, multiple COVID tests in order yeah. to get into any event or anything like that. So in a way, it is, it's, it just adds that extra bit of like admin and everything takes a bit longer and it's a bit more of a mission. Um, but once you kind of just get used to the way that things are, mm. I'm just grateful that we're able to still travel and be able to race. Um, I'm kind of willing to put up with the, the extra stuff that we have to do. Yeah. Um, personally, I, I had COVID in December. Um, and so I know like after that, I was kind of, okay for a while in terms of like actually getting the virus but obviously oh, not... no not really um i definitely didn't feel myself though like i had headaches i lost my sense of taste and smell and stuff no. um but i just for me i went for all the checks afterwards with your heart and lungs and everything and just made sure i was clear to exercise and yeah i was fine okay so okay. yeah but in Sechaga for me, as as you for young athletes in for all fitters to better can motivate and can rot here. What do you feel as it? I think it depends, kind of what your goals are. Like I mean, what I say to to younger athletes, um, and I do. I get some, especially the younger girls, um, racing cross country and stuff when they ask me about. You know how how do you do it how do you where do you start and i think for younger athletes the really the important thing is to enjoy racing your bike or enjoy riding your bike and that comes in the form of riding with friends trying new things um getting your skills base up um, because that sets you up so well for anything you want to do um in in the cycling world later um 
and then I think really what what can the best way to to motivate anyone is to have a goal right you know so whatever that may be if it's finishing a race if it's doing a race in a certain time to when you are training to obviously be thinking about that goal that you have in your mind um however big or small it is and yeah that's that's what motivates me to get through the hard training sessions and the uncomfortable drop-offs and rocks and all that kind of thing is there a bang for fall nie want dit is dis amper die ergste ding vir daai daai tipe goed wat julle ry is as jy fall val jy baie seer yes exactly and it and it's real um it often happens you go through a time where you don't fall for a long time and yeah. you, you gain like, confidence you gain confidence yeah. again and it happened to me a week or two three weeks ago now um i felt like i was in such a good spot with i'd been racing some world cups and obviously your level increases because now you're having to ride these crazy things over and over and you're racing for it yeah. um and i went out on a training ride and it, there was some quite <laughs> So I'm quite a uh, very slippery rocks um and I went a bit fast and I fell and hit my knee really hard. Um so I just washed out to the side and basically all my weight absorbed onto my knee. And since then like I can feel my confidence level isn't the same. Um it's not necessarily like I didn't break it or anything it's just been sore and uncomfortable. But to go back onto a cross country course again it hasn't been easy because now every time I approach a rocky section I'm thinking I have that image in my head that I'm going to slide out. Um so it's just it's to get past it's to get past those things and it's very natural um that you will crash hopefully it's not too bad at some point you know and to to know how to come back from that um and again most of it is mental and based on your confidence in what you're willing to do. Yeah. Well Candis bye bye donkey for your bye. In the yeah, start of the new week, start of Friday. We go all on Sunday, Friday and Sunday for the television set and for your thank you. For your look and for your route and yeah, then for the start. Thank you so much. And I will also also net for talent of tools. We thank you so for all the boorskap and that the episode is made possible.